on today's episode of cornbread and crab boxes we're gonna clean this bull nose up y'all tune in with us you got anything to say genesis i love the trucking and it's really cool yeah it's really cool Raising them right. Like, can I tell them something? Tell them. Okay, so, yo, this video is gonna be really good, dude. And it's really fun. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I think the first place we're gonna start, I have two different kind of chemicals that I've kind of chose to use on this truck. I'm gonna use the purple power for this side and a lot of people recommend purple power. You no, know, I'm always one for like, well, can you save a dollar? You know what I mean? There's this stuff that you can buy at your local Dollar Tree if you're redneck enough to have one in your area. It's called LA's Totally Awesome use it full strength you can buy a bottle for a dollar or you can buy a container of it for like three dollars it's cheap and i think it works really well especially on this stuff right here i'm gonna set y'all up i'm gonna get the spray in this thing and i'm gonna let it soak Gonna do the finger test over here on the purple power. Ah, pretty good. Slide ease came off pretty clean. Of course, there's as not as much vegetation on this side as they are on the other side. Finger test, LA's totally awesome. That's pretty good. Being the fact that this stuff has not set as long as the purple power has. I actually just sprayed this probably two or three minutes ago. Now you're probably asking me, Cornbread, why would you spray all those harsh chemicals on this truck? Aren't you worried about the paint? I mean, have you not looked at it? Rust holes, rust holes, faded paint, patina. It's beautiful. But honestly, for these old trucks that's been sitting in the moss, this is really the best way in my book to take all that stuff off and then we can properly clean it. time lapse just does not do it justice but the one thing i was afraid of bed was going to be blowed out full of rust holes and there's not a single rust hole inside of this bed a piece of rebar probably sticking out of it it's not even blowed out down in here i mean that just blows my mind because this truck's been sitting look how much crud came out of it and there was dirt metal rotten trees decaying animals didn't find no human remains so that's good i think it came fairly clean from what it was it was pretty bad so now that i got the bed cleaned out i've given the purple power and the la's totally awesome time to you know work on this moss and all this sap and tree juice and i'm gonna start my three-part process on how to clean these old trucks decent 
the first step is pretty much halfway done. Spray it down with some powerful degreaser, let it sit for a while. And I'm gonna take pressure washer and get it hooked up and get as much vegetation that I can off of the pickup. I'm gonna go grab some dish soap because for a lot of this big stuff, the degreaser works good. Dish soap like Dawn, or if you're like me, you buy the cheap stuff at Dollar Tree. Works good for getting some of the small contaminants that kind of embeds itself in the paint. And then comes part three, where I take a regular car soap and just wash over the whole thing and kind of protect it from the elements, keep it from turning green again, I guess. Yeah, we'll go with that. Well, some people may ask, cornbread, what do you use? Nothing but Meguiar's. Two reasons for that. One, you can find it anywhere, including Walmart, Harbor Freight, any parts store. Number two, it's actually decent. So I've always used it. I'll stand by it, every one of their products. I'm gonna set y'all up, see if we can't get this thing clean. we got as far as the first step right there is a before shot on this side right here's after you can even tell a difference you know from the bumper i did do the inside of the bed but of course all the water pulls down there to the end but look at the difference between that side and that side big difference and of course you've got this side which looks pretty darn good I do have to say so myself. Now here's the front view. This is before, and that is after. I mean, I think that's a pretty big difference. Going from looking something like this to looking something like this, that's how clean toolbox got. This is just to show you guys that's out there, maybe watching cornbread. Please. You can take something like this that's been sitting since 2010, get the motor running, just a set of plugs, runs off its own fuel now, wash it up, get some of the kinks worked out of it, bring it back to life, and put it back on the road. Now I know, of course, there's probably a few more things that you're probably gonna have to do to a rig in order to get it roadworthy you yeah, have state inspections like the state of Virginia does. Of course, there's gonna be some things that you're gonna to have to do. Gaskets that you're probably gonna to have to replace. But at the same time, it's kind of inexpensive because parts on these old trucks, old cars are so cheap, especially these F-150s. Now, I couldn't say that for a Hudson Hornet or a Chevy Bel Air for these 80s models, Fords, Chevrolets, Dodges, you can find them in abundance everywhere. People park them for a simple reason, or they just park them because they don't want to drive them no more. And some of them end up in a crusher, which I think is a shame, because somebody could drive this, bring it back around, bring it back to life, and this would be a good truck for somebody to drive. Easy to work on, the common man can work on it, drive it, Everything's mechanical. That's the reason why I do this is because I would rather drive something like this than something newer that I couldn't work on and have to take to a dealership. These trucks are very reliable. 300 inline six is very reliable. Ford made it for years, so you know there's an abundance of them. You ain't gotta worry about parts. And for stuff like rust, cab corners, floor pans, they make patch panels for them, so that way, I mean, you could go ahead and fix it yourself, or you could take it to a body shop. Everything on the motor, simple. 
same way with the transmission anybody can do it you just got to put your mind to it and it brings these old trucks off the road and saves them from the crusher which i think is a good thing i'm gonna go ahead wash it up do my three-part process and then i'm gonna take some after shots and let y'all see the before and after i think this is gonna be a a good little rig bull nose that's been sitting since 2010 man i can't believe how much she cleaned up it just shows that these trucks are worth more than taking them to the scrap yard for a few dollars you can take them fix them up clean them up and sell them for a whole lot more than what you would have took it to the scrap yard for and it saves one from the graveyard I only done the two-part process on this truck. I didn't get to the third one because the sun's coming down and I got to take my kids to baseball practice. So that's going to be it for this episode. If you haven't, make sure you like, share, subscribe. So that way y'all can get some more of this cornbread content that I'm trying to push out. It's got to be worth my time. But anyway, I'll see y'all fellers later.